All right, this is Matt Mayoko from NBC Sports Bay Area, just back from Tampa on the early morning flight out of Florida, arrived at SFO sometime, I think around noon, and I'm back. And uh, some things I'm going to touch on. First, if you're watching this video, please subscribe, like, comment, um, all that stuff. And this video is brought to you by Canyon Club Brewery. It's a brewery, a restaurant, a beer garden, and a very family friendly atmosphere see a lot of people there with their families with their dog and uh, having a good time out by the fire pits a great menu of beer selections as well as food items so check that out and also it's coming soon to the livery in danville so you know a lot of people wondering what are the 49ers going to do about special teams well folks they finally did something and it's probably not what um, maybe a lot of people had in mind but last week at the trading deadline one of the areas i thought the 49ers could address would be to get a special teams ace you know like kind of guy that is just a special teams contributor and you know probably pay a very little price a small price for that well, they didn't do it last week, but they did it on Monday. Uh, Nick McLeod, who's a backup cornerback, actually started five games with the New York Giants earlier this season. Um, apparently, he did not accept a pay cut from the Giants, so he was released. Well, the 49ers signed him to the practice squad, and he is known as a very good special teams player. And he plays a spot that... I mean, my, my guess is that he would take Darrell Luter's spot as the jammer on special teams. And this is an area that has been an issue uh, last year. A, a punt in the Super Bowl hit Luter's leg. Uh, Ray Ray McLeod didn't recover it. Muffed punt. Chiefs turned that into a very quick touchdown. And then in Sunday's game against Tampa Bay, Luter allowed himself to get blocked into Jacob Cowing. Another muff punt, another quick turnaround touchdown for Tampa Bay, their first touchdown of that game. So with McLeod being on the practice squad and the 49ers released veteran safety Adrian Amos to create room for McLeod, I think what you're going to see beginning this game Sunday against the Seattle Seahawks is that McLeod will have one of those three active spots I mean, I would think that they're not going to waste much time to get him up to speed and get him on the field. Um, so there are two spots on the practice squad that um, team can elevate a player up. And then the same player can be elevated three times from the practice squad to the 53 man before they have to make that move permanent and put that player on the 53 man in order to be uh, suited suited up for games and to play in games. So look for McLeod, a guy uh, who's 26 years old, to uh, have a role with the 49ers on special teams as they try to tighten up that area. And boy, does it need tightening up because, you know, when I sit down to do my grades after every game, it just seems like constantly uh, I'm giving the 49ers either a, an F or a D minus or something out of in that nature. Um, you know, th that play was a huge play, obviously, on Sunday, as well as uh, the three Jake Moody missed field goals, but then he somewhat redeems himself with 44-yard um, field goals. Time expired, just sneaking that thing inside the right upright. So uh, 49ers make that roster move, and uh, Kyle Shanahan will be talking a little bit later, uh, an update after the team uh, comes out of Week 10 with a 23-20 to victory over the Buccaneers. Um, one thing to keep an eye on going into this game, I talked about how you know, Christian McCaffrey returning to the lineup. You know, last year he played like 80% of the snaps when he was on the uh, on the field um, or in, in uniform, I should say. And there was no easing him back into the action. He ended up playing 56 of the 49ers 64 snaps in that game and um, not huge production in the running game. Not a lot of room to run there for McCaffrey. In fact, uh, PFF had him, you know, he averaged only uh, 0.9 yards 
per carry before contact. So a good portion of his 39 yards on 13 carries, uh, two thirds of it was after contact. So McCaffrey, uh, his his biggest attribute in a lot of ways is the stuff you don't necessarily see. I mean, that's tough to say because the guy was so productive last year, You know, nearly 1,500 yards rushing, nearly 600 yards receiving all the touchdowns, but in the game winning drive, when the 49ers had to move down the field with 41 seconds left, it was Christian McCaffrey who was kept in, in pass protection, helped open up things, I believe for JJ, for uh, Juwan Jennings and for Ricky Pearsall. And so Brock Purdy hit those guys, two passes each to Jennings and Pearsall, and they move into position for um, Jake Moody's kick. So, um, yeah, the, the play distribution on offense, um, Pearsall, 41 snaps in this game. Debo Samuel, 50 snaps. Juwan Jennings actually had more snaps than any other receiver as he comes back from the hip injury, the, uh, the psoas strain that he had in his hip. Um Jennings had 58 snaps of, so he played 91% of the snaps. Uh, the fourth receiver was Ronnie Bell with 10 snaps and Jacob Cowing had three snaps over on the defensive side. Uh, looking at the defensive backs, Lenore played every snap at cornerback. Renardo green uh, had a little bit of a, an issue with an ankle. He played 48 snaps. Isaac Yadam played 47 snaps. And then Rock Yassin, uh, 12 snaps. And the defensive line distribution, Nick Bosa had the most snaps at 52, followed by Malik Collins at 44, Leonard Floyd at 41, Sam Okawanu at 36, uh, Jordan Elliott at 32, Evan Anderson had 15 snaps in this game. And then Khalil Davis, 11, uh, Robert Beal, 8. And then, um, I'm sorry, Kalia Davis had 11 and Khalil Davis had 5. So 49ers suited up a lot of defensive linemen in that heat of Tampa Bay, rotating guys in and rotating guys out to keep them fresh. Ultimately, uh, the 49ers defense, you know, the, the, the pass defense was very good in this game, limiting the Buccaneers to just 105 total yards of passing. Uh, the, the run defense wasn't nearly as good, but uh, 49ers come out of it with a 23-20 to 20 victory. And uh, again, thanks for watching this video. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, that's it for now.